Hey, everybody. Brittany Heller here today to talk to you about the NABSEP PV Design Specialist Certification. And when I think about the Design Specialist Certification or the other two NABSEP Specialist Certifications, when I think about them, I think about them as almost sitting underneath the umbrella of the NABSEP PV Installation Professional. Previously, there was less options with certifications and installation professionals had to know all these different subsets or specialties. And in 2018 or so, they broke out design, installation, and commissioning and maintenance as their own specialist certifications. So instead of testing on all those different areas, the design specialist is just on design. And this certification is for anybody who is an experienced designer. It's for people who understand the mechanical and electrical side of design. And not only do they understand design and have made some designs, their designs have actually successfully been installed. So that's a little bit about who this certification is for. If that sounds like you, let's dive in. So what are the requirements to get the PVDS? Well, they're similar to many of the other NABSET certifications. They first require OSHA 10. OSHA 10 is a 10-hour certification that goes over hazard recognition in the construction industry. So that's a certification that never expires and is great for anybody who is working on construction sites. The second requirement is that you need at least 24 hours of advanced training. And they even go as far to break those 24 hours down. Six of those hours need to be on the National Electrical Code, and 18 of those hours need to be on the job task analysis for design specialists. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a bit. Make sure that whatever training you do, it's completed within five years of when you submit your application. And finally, you have to have documented experience of your design work. So what does that mean? Let's look at that a little further. You'll need to complete designs for installations that equal 12 project credits. And they break down the project credits by system size. So for systems that are one to 999 kilowatts, that's two project credits. And for a system size of one megawatt or higher, that's gonna give you three project credits. So you'll need to get somewhere between four and six designs completed for installations that you'll submit documentation for. For each design that you do, you'll need to submit a system summary, and that just has basic details like the location, when the project was completed, the size, and contact information for some folks involved. You'll also need to submit actual design documentation. So that's your, your plan set. And that's going to show a lot of different technical pieces of information you can see listed here. You'll also need to submit permit and inspection records. So that's going to be your electrical or your building permit, as well as a final approved inspection document. And lastly, you'll also need to describe the scope of your work on the project. Especially if your name isn't listed on the design, you'll need to explain what you did, how you did it, and you might even need a supporting letter. So now let's talk about what's on the PVDS exam. Of course, we know it's going to be pretty heavy on design, but let's take a look at the job task analysis, which is created by subject matter experts who work in the field, to look exactly at what they call out as key domains for this certification. So if we look here at the different domains, we can see review customer expectations, review project criteria, assess project site, configure both the mechanical and electrical design, configure system monitoring, control, and communications design. You'll also need to be able to prepare project documentation, secure permits and approvals, and finally adapt to that system design. And so the job task analysis is a really critical part of what you're going to be tested on and what NABSEP and all the different volunteers who work with them see as the most important things of being considered a design specialist. Make sure you review that document before you take the exam. When it comes to how much this exam is, let's talk about those fees. There's both an application fee and a testing fee that you'll pay to NABZEP, and that totals 
$500. In the event you don't pass the exam the first time, there's also a retake fee of $275. But that's just if you need it. So let's talk about the exam itself. You can take this exam either at a measure learning testing center, which is going to a testing site like a computer lab, or you could take this exam from the comfort of your home or office using live remote proctoring, and that's just using your own laptop. For this exam, you have four hours to take it, and it has 70 multiple choice questions, 60 of which are scored. Everyone has access to an electronic version of the National Electrical Code, and you'll also have access to a calculator. A scaled score of 70 is required to pass this exam and to be considered a certified PV design specialist. Yes. So now that you're certified, let's talk recertification. NABSEP professionals need to recertify every three years. And that happens from the date that you get certified. And to recertify, you'll need to prove your industry involvement. You'll also need to complete 30 continuing education credits. And essentially, that's 30 continuing education hours that are focused on specific things. For the PB design specialist, they require six hours of the NEC, two hours of building and fire codes, 12 hours related to the job task analysis specifically. And then the last 10 hours can really be anything involved with renewable energy as long as it's been approved by NABZEP. We have tons of options at Heat Spring if you need to recertify your NABSEP and also to get your NABSEP certification. If you have any questions at all, we're here and we're happy to help. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in class.